Moshtinia, Norm. Good morning, Dan. Uh, gee, we didn't get to talk to you before wake-up time again. Seems strange. Yeah, Hoot, we're on, a, we're on a string here. We also hear you have a uh, Seminole stowaway on board. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, I guess we're going to have to confess to it. He wasn't on board when we launched, and he's on board now, so he must be a stowaway. Shuttle Commander Hoot Gibson and Pilot Charlie Precourt have been involved in uh, final setups of equipment uh, aboard Atlantis and the transfer of some logistical hardware from the Mir into the shuttle, which will be returned uh, to Earth. Uh, much of that equipment and uh, experimentation uh, was accumulated by the Mir 18 crew during their three and a half month stay aboard the Mir. Atlantis Mirror, Space Lab, <laughs> Houston, spot meter. That's a mouth from the base. Go ahead. This view from payload bay cameras looking up the oh, crystal sorry, module. What you have up there. Uh, there's two more spot meters on board. L let me tell you where the stowage is for three spot meters, as we're not sure which one you're holding. Uh, one should have been an A6. Okay. But if we were just wondering uh, if we had any extras because the Russians have a spot meter that uh, is uh, lacking in batteries. Oh, now we understand. Uh, we have not identified extra batteries yet. Okay. Yeah, all of our spot meters are fine. It's just that uh, the Russians uh, were wondering if we might have a battery. Atlantis, Houston, Hoot, uh, let's delete MGAS checkout. We can work that during MIR-19. Jim McKenna, Aviation Week for Dr. Thaggard. What is the number one problem or issue that you believe should be addressed before Shannon Lucid arrives at Mir next we next March, as well as with regards to long duration U.S. space flight? I, my impression is psychological aspects part probably loom largest. Uh, it, there doesn't really seem to be big problems uh, physiologically. I think we still have to find out what's happening with mineral mineral loss from bone, for instance. And obviously, radiation is an ongoing problem as long as you're in space. Uh, but I think anybody can do three months or four months, as I'm doing, and uh, six months, in my opinion, and longer is a different different matter entirely. I think Shannon won't have any problem, but I think we need to address some things for the folks who plan to be up here six months and longer. This is Paul Hoverston with USA Today. For Norm Thaggard, sort of following up on the same question, what about the systems on Mir or the setup or configuration should absolutely not be done with the International Space Station, if there is anything. Well, from what I saw, it, it takes a uh, considerable effort from two folks to keep Mir Station operating. I think you would want to minimize the amount of maintenance ongoing that were required for a new space station. I don't think I'd run conduits both air and electrical through hatches, which uh, make it difficult, if not impossible, to close those hatches rapidly if you needed to. And lastly, I would uh, certainly pay a lot of attention to storage, because if there were a problem that we had, it was finding places to store things. Nick Sorokin for The Voice of America. This is for Vladimir Dejurov. Nikolai Sorokin is the voice of Vladimir Dejurov. Why was it easier to get back to the world of the world? You were there Well, the most difficult thing to get used to is uh, purely uh, the, the, the circumstances of uh, space, of the cosmos, where things just 
kind of fly around by them, you know, where you leave something somewhere, it, it kind of floats there, and uh, if you try and put something in a particular place, it uh, doesn't stay there. And uh, the trick is to learn how to arrange everything and uh, to make sure that it is convenient for uh, operation in space. Uh, Todd Halverson of Florida today for Hoot Gibson. Uh, Hoot, the mission to date has been uh, remarkably smooth, but like with all enterprises, there's probably room for improvement. Uh, what types of lessons have you learned that can be applied to future shuttle mirror missions or the assembly of the space station? Todd, like you say, it has gone pretty smoothly. Uh, there's an aspect of it, though, that you don't see, and that's that's how hard we're hustling here on board every day to accomplish all the things that we need to get done. On a long-duration flight or a uh, space station flight, uh, you're not going to be able to keep up the kind of pace that we've been keeping up, and a lot of it has been associated with the rather difficult uh area of uh, transfers of uh, material from the orbiter to the mirror and from the mirror uh, back to the orbiter, both equipment, uh, future test equipment, completed test samples, and all those sorts of things. Now, we expected that this was going to be a pretty big effort, and there was going to be a lot of uh, a lot of uncertainty, and there was actually going to be a lot of unknown when we actually got up here and tried to do it, and that, in fact, is kind of what we've bumped into, uh, and we've been We've been working a little bit extra and a little bit harder to try and accommodate all of those things. Uh, but that's the one area. And I think for the future docking flights, the transfer plan, the locations, the stowage, all of it needs to be uh, detailed down to a T for us to really be able to do it smoothly and efficiently. And I think that's one of the big lessons that we will have seen out of this flight. Uh, let, me, let me finish by saying that was not unexpected. We pretty well knew that that was the kind of situation we were facing when we got up here, and, uh, and I think we've adapted to it about as well as you could. Irene Brown with UPI for Dr. Thagard. If you had to do it all again, what would you have done differently or brought with you that you didn't have to prepare for four months in space? Well, if I could have brought my wife along, I probably would have done that. <laughs> Uh, I think I would have paid a lot more attention to the to the food that was stored for us on board. Uh, I think that, in general, uh, we we thought there were areas room for improvement there. But otherwise, I I felt pretty good with what I already had on board. I don't require a lot. I had two good companions, and that made up for a lot of the deficiencies. Uh, Earl Lane, Newsday for Norm Thagard. When you said that psychologically uh, a six-month mission is a different matter entirely, what did you mean? Uh, did you get on each other's nerves, or were you starting to get on each other's nerves? No, it had nothing to do with the crew relationships. Those uh, remained fine throughout. In fact, I can honestly say there were never any serious uh, disputes among the crew, uh, and probably wouldn't have been even on a six-month mission. For the American on board or Russian space station, you're the only English speaker on board in general. The cultural isolation is extreme. Uh, there were times when I went 72 hours without speaking to an English-speaking person. Uh, I didn't get a lot of news up here. Uh, all of those things uh, start to weigh heavily after a while. Since I knew from the start I could do anything for three months, it, it wasn't going to be a problem for me. If I'd been looking at six months, I would have been real worried at about three months that I wasn't going to make it their impressions of the coordination between the ground control centers and the orbiter and mirror, uh, especially with the science crew, and Norm uh, seems to have gotten a bit testy at times in the last couple of days over things that you all are being asked to do and, and there have been concerns that you've been overbooked. Uh, could each of the commanders please talk uh, a little bit about your impressions of that? Do you feel overbooked? Is this a, just a nit that's being picked, or is this a serious problem that will have to be worked out before the next joint mission is flown? Well, Beth, with regard to Norm sounding testy, let me just say that Norm always sounds like that, and uh, I, don't, uh, I don't believe that Norm has been testy or, or meant to sound testy during any of this. Uh, I have to give the ground... Uh, tremendous, tremendous grades on, on the coordination and the, uh, the way they put everything together and the way that things have flowed up here. This is not an easy thing to coordinate the activities of, 
uh, of MIR-18, MIR-19, and STS-71, and I think that uh, both mission control centers, the SOUP uh, and Houston, in my view and from what I've seen, have done just a spectacular job of ironing this all out and making this flow smoothly. So uh, that's what I think about the whole thing. Uh, I would like to hear the uh, a Russian translation come up of the question for uh, Anatoly and for Volodya at this point. We really didn't have any concerns. And such, such a question really surprises me, because Norm was prepared for all experiments, and he performed them spectacularly without any help from us. And he didn't ask for any help from us, and uh, he didn't need our help. So there weren't really any complications. Isn't that true, Norm? I would like to say, uh, to answer a somewhat uh, different uh, angle on this question, when we're talking about coordinating the two uh, ground control se centers and the coordination of crews in orbit, I think this is a very important issue, and I think that it must be carefully prepared, uh, very very much like a sports team. Uh, this uh, sports team spend a lot of time training and in coordinating uh, an understanding among team members so that the team members can uh, play well on the field, uh, for example, like the Houston, Ro Houston Rockets. And then you can achieve uh, very great successes in this way. And must, everything must be carefully prepared for a flight uh, so that the flight will be a good training ground for future work. This is Seth Borenstein from the Orlando Sentinel for Norm Thaggard. You, after spending nearly four months on Mir, you're just about to leave it. Can you tell me what uh, parts of Mir are you going to miss and what's going to be going through your head as, uh, as you pull away and watching it? The first thing that comes to mind is not too long after the flight is over, the MiR-18 crew goes its separate ways, which means Volodya and Gennady back to Russia while I remain in the United States. That makes me sad, of course, because I think we've gotten to be good friends. Uh, and in, this may well be probably is my last space flight, so I have to think about the fact that I won't get to experience this again. And that also, uh, whether it were on MiR station or on space shuttle, I would uh, think about that. This is Phil Chen Earth News, Fanatoli. You were aboard Mir five years ago when Crystal first arrived. Uh, what was your impression going through the docking tunnel, especially since you came from a U.S. shuttle rather than a Soviet shuttle? Uh, вопрос к Анатолию. Вы находились на станции Мир пять лет назад, когда прибыл uh, модуль Кристал. Uh, каковы ваши впечатления о uh, стыковочном туннеле, uh, уч особенно учитывая тот факт, что в этот раз вы прибыли на американском шаттле? I think that the docking module, docking node, is in a good uh, technical condition, although, of course, the station itself has been in orbit for a long time, and it should always be kept in mind that uh, in, uh, in space, uh, space is a very aggressive environment, and right now we're testing this uh, this, enge this engineering technology over a course of many years. Uh, my impressions of uh, the uh, dynamics of controlling the complex from the shuttle, uh, and then we alternated with controlling the complex with Mir. Uh, all of this depended on the uh, uh, docking module, and I think that the structure showed itself to be a excellent piece of equipment, and we always keep in mind that uh, highly qualified specialists were engaged in fabricating it. This is James Ford from WFTV in Orlando for Dr. Thaggard. It's sort of a follow-up to Seth Bornstein's question. 
What's your concern as you get ready to land and come back into 1G after being in microgravity so long? And what are you going to do once you get back here on Earth? the answer to that question uh, explains what was interpreted as being testy <laughs> with the ground. Uh, I did complain this morning that I, had, because of a task I was assigned, I had missed my exercise period. I'm concerned about physical condition when I get back on the ground. Uh, the Russians believe that you need to exercise with two one-hour periods a day and that, that it ought to ramp up uh, in severity toward the end of the flight just before coming home. And uh, I concur. I think that's important, too. So we ought to do something, and we ought to do what we can to protect those uh, exercise periods uh, just before coming home. Other than that, I'm not sure I've been so, so testy, but that, that came out of a real uh, concern about being healthy and being able to walk and do well immediately upon return to Earth. Uh, question from Echo Moskva to the Russian commanders. I wanted to know about uh, your colleague, uh, colleague Polyakov, that uh, there, were, there was a female crew member who performed a traditional female uh, task such as washing dishes. I wanted to know uh, uh, your opinions on this. It's difficult to say, but such particular uh, changes, uh, there weren't any such changes. Of course, uh, the, uh, up here on the station, we uh, have a particular way of working, and it really doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Everybody's got their responsibilities, and everybody tries to do them to fulfill them. I would say that uh, with all these people here that it is more interesting uh, up here. Uh, can Gennady add anything? Well, of course, women are needed, and the more the better. First of all, we have this gigantic complex in orbit. This is a new step in the creation of... Uh, uh, this is something that Tsiolkovsky at one time had dreamed about. All of these dreams have been practically uh, implemented and are being implemented. And of course, uh, uh, you can't do that without women. Well, Houston, I guess, uh, story, I guess we're ready to proceed. We have come to that point in the mission that I guess uh, all of us have actually been dredging to uh, quite some degree, and that's the point where we have to say farewell to the Mir-19 crew, and I'm glad we called it farewell and not goodbye, because we are going to see them uh, very shortly. They're going to be gone much too long. They're going to be gone 60 days, but uh, we are, all of us, I think, looking forward to when we get them back on Earth. We have started with the mission of Mir-18, STS-71, and Mir-19, what is intended to be and what will be a very long a very long program, a very fruitful program. STS-71 is going to be drawing to a close here in a very few days when we return with the crew of Mirror 18 back to the Earth. However, none of us feel like the mission is really going to be complete until we get not just our our comrades, our compatriots on Mir-19, but our very good friends from Mir-19 back to Earth. We're hoping to be in Kazakhstan when they come back in the Soyuz, but our mission, none of us have felt, would be complete until all of our fellow crew members are back again to the Earth. So we're here today to tell them farewell. And the mission that we've set out on uh, is a very long mission. Our phase one is a continuation of what we started with Mir-18, Mir-19, STS-71. International Space Station will be the next continuation. 
of what we started and what we're preparing to say farewell to just one small part of that long continuing overall program. So we are drawing to a close one mission. The bigger mission, the continuing mission, is a mission of many, many years. And that is going to continue on long after we have landed and long after Mir-19 has landed. When we leave, Mir-19 is going to be very much in our thoughts and in our hearts. Uh, we want to leave them with a few presents to remember us by. And so we have a couple of presents to present to Anatoly and to Nick at this time. Uh, so they'll be able to think of us. We have a couple of our crew pins uh, so that they can keep us in their thoughts uh, during the next couple of months before they come back. And we also have a STS-71 wristwatch for Anatoly and Nick. Uh, very shortly we're going to be uh, closing the hatch tonight and tomorrow uh, we'll each climb into our own individual rockets. Uh, speaking of rockets, how about them Houston rockets? Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but during the press conference, during the press conference, Anatoly mentioned the Houston rockets, and uh, it turns out he's a very big fan of the rockets, and so we have another, another present that we'd like to present to Anatoly, and it's the new emblem of the Houston Rockets. We have a, a Houston Rockets t-shirt uh, that has the uh, that has their brand new emblem and Anatoly uh, it's a Drew it's a Drugi Podorek. That's another present for Anatoly. No the emblem. No the emblem Houston Rockets. Uh, are you able to see this new emblem uh, on the TV? Yes, sir. Uh, we certainly are. And, uh, boy, talk about uh, basketball players uh, in the air. You all are getting more air time there than uh, anyone ever. And it's all he can really jump. Well, we have a couple of other small presents for them. Um, we have just a little bit of fresh fruit and just a little bit of, uh, of a real American tradition, I guess. Uh, we have a few bags of tortillas that we'd like to leave with them. And we have uh, the remainder of our fresh fruit that we'd like to leave with Mir 19 because I'm not sure. It may be a while before they see fresh fruit again. Nikolai is saying this will be my happiness. So I guess uh, I guess we hit home with uh, we hit home with many of our presents. Okay, who we're looking at some great smiles there. Someday we'll be growing oranges up there. Not too long from now. Story, I guess we're going to leave Rodnik, which is Anatoly's uh, call sign, Anatoly's crew call sign. I guess we're going to leave just Rodnik 1 and Rodnik 2 up there. Uh, maybe a word or two from Rodnik 3. And in case you didn't know, we were called Rodnik, which is a, a word which means a, a spring, as in a, a water spring in the woods. And Anatoly was Rodnik 1 and Nikolai Rodnik 2, and, and I was Rodnik 3. And we trained together as the backup crew, did uh, our equipage uh, for uh, over a year, and uh, I really enjoyed the experience, a great commander and a great board engineer, and uh, I have uh, some emotional thoughts about saying goodbye to them, but I know they'll do just an absolutely great job up here until they're landing, uh, their soft landing, the Akipasadka, in August. And I wish them a lot of luck and uh, success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anatoly, I don't know how to say this in Russian, but we wish you fair winds and following seas and soft landings. We will count the days until you come back and we get to see you again. Thank you very much for all your help. 